Hello everyone, welcome to another episode. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to make a smooth and basic camera follow system in Godot. And here is the final result of what we're going to be achieving in this video. Now note, this is the actual final result. Now the final result in the video would look different. This is because at the time of recording, the camera had been slightly rotated on the x-axis. So it might give a little different orientation of the view. So don't feel disappointed. This is the actual final result. You can tweak the variables that are going to be included in our script in order to get the desired effect of camera follow you wish. Okay. So let's make our own camera follow. So I have prepared a demo level, which consists of a player, which is just a rigid body, a directional light, which simulates the light in the scene, and these cuboid platforms, which are all static bodies. And the camera in the world is currently parented to the player. Now, look what happens when I play the scene. As you can see, when I move the player, the camera follows its exact position, only with its offset away as it follows the parent's position while it's in its offset. Now, it's not conveying us feedback on whether our player is moving left or right or jumping but although in this simple scene it the the environment still gives us the feedback but there are some instances where we might need to give more feedback to the player and also smooth camera movement means more better gameplay experience so let's try to make one so I already have a scripts folder prepared here and when I open the drop down you can see a bunch of scripts. So I'm going to add a new script by right clicking on the camera and hitting attach script. I'm going to go uh, go and define the path which is going to be in that scripts folder and let's name it camera follow okay now let's hit open and now create okay now we have our script here in our editor now we need to declare some variables so let's declare them now first going to de declare, I'm just first going to remove these comments, a var target. And you, it, this is optional, but for the safe case, I'm just going to define this as an object. You, actually, that means that you're giving this variable a variable type. So this variable type is type of object. So we're going to be specifying the object. So the object in this case is going to be get underscore parent because although this is parented to the player, we're, we're going to be unparenting it. So let's just do that. So this camera would access the main parent node. And now we need to get a node from the parent like that means a child and in this case we're looking for our player so within those inverted columns we're going to find out player and yeah that's a string for the node path okay now we have defined what our target is now let's define a var smooth Speed. 
and I'm going to define this to a float. And now since I want to edit this variable in the inspector, I'm going to use something called export. So now this can be edited in the inspector. Now I'm going to erase the function already and I'm going to uncomment the process function. Okay, and yes, this this function would run every frame. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be setting this position equal to the smoothed position. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be typing self. Now, in JDScript, you don't have to type self, but for understanding, I'm going to put self and also it's more safe, so self dot or uh, to transform dot origin should be equal to self dot okay self dot transform dot origin now what this would do is this would just set the camera to the same position, but that's not what you want. So we should change this to target. Now what's going to happen here? Now if we save this and hit play. And I think so it is getting it as a null instance. So in this case, before we do this, we have to actually put if if in brackets you don't have to put brackets but for understandable for understandable reasons but i'm putting brackets because it would be easier to understand so if target is not equal to null then I'm going to put the cursor here and then right click and indent right. Now, this is going to run in this if statement. So now if I hit play, I think so it's saying that it's getting a null instance. Okay, so I understand. This. So, it's just it's trying to get it, but it is not. So let's try an on ready. This is going to get the object at the start of the game. Okay, there we go. Now you can see it's actually following, but yeah, you, but you can at, le at least see it moving. You can see, well, the shadows moving. So that means we can see, and yeah, you can see we're jumping. But now what are we missing here? Now, yeah, we're missing a very major thing, and that is the offset. So I'm going to say the offset. And it's equal to a vector 3. And I'm going to edit this in the inspector for now. Export. Okay. And I'm going to say plus offset. Okay. Now I'm just going to go and click on the camera node. And then you will see this offset. So according to the camera in the space right here, it is at a Z offset 30. So let's copy that value and paste it in the Z value here. Now this may be a little too far because as you saw in the beginning, it was too far away. So I'll just decrease that to a value of 20 and let's see what happens. It's just a matter of experimenting with the values you like. And there we go. But as you can see, it still shows the same behavior as I have shown you in the beginning of the video. So now I still didn't add any smoothing here. So now the thing we're going to be using here is a lerp method here. So the lerp takes in three parameters from 
which is a variant, which means any type of variable, to, which is also a variant, and weight, which is a float. And the weight is like, how is it going to look? Like, by how much is it going to look? So, in this case, all we got to do is just copy this. And then that's for the first parameter. And the two is actually this entire piece that we just wrote. That we just typed, basically. So yeah. And now it's expecting one more parameter. So the weight should be smooth speed into delta. Now we have to define a smooth speed. Now since we're multiplying this by delta, I will go with about 10. Uh, it, uh, please know that this is just worth experimenting. So let's see what's going to happen. And there we go. You can see that the object is actually moving. But wait, what is that? Jitter, isn't it? Look, very bad movement. Well, What's the fix for this? If we go into the script, we're actually running this in the process. And also our player movement is also running the process. So before that, I'm also I'm gonna change the player movement to run in the physics process. Okay. And I'm also going to run this in the physics process. Now the physics process is updating every physics step. So this is useful for physics calculations, but I found out that making the player movement and the, the camera follow both run under the physics process than in the process. It, it even happens similarly for the vehicle bodies in Godot. If you are an experienced developer in Godot, some of you might understand this, but if you face jitter in the physics bodies, then it's worth changing this to physics process. Now, let's hit play and see what happens. Now you can see what I'm talking about. The jitter is almost gone. But there is still some jitter. Well, for that, if you want a lot of fix for the jitter, then you're going to go to the project project settings in the general and scroll down until you find physics we have to go to the common place the common tab here so now you can see something the physics jitter fix now this is set to 0 0.5 it's okay but I'm just going to set this to something like 2 or something and that should help with a lot of jitter. So let's save this and rerun. So now you can see a lot of the jitter is now fixed. And there we go. Now it's just worth experimenting because in different games the offset would be different. But in this case you can now see that the camera is now following smoothly. And if you want to indicate this effect more clearly, then you just have to decrease the smooth speed. And now you can see the effect more clearly. And yes. And you could also do a, another adjustment. So instead of using transform.origin, you can use translation. translation. Of course that's the most common one to be using and also the best one to use. So yeah, you can now see it's still the same. So that's it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell if you want to get notified on newer videos.
Anyway, I hope this video was useful to you, and I hope that now you would be able to make your own basic camera follow script. Anyways, I hope to see you again soon, so see you later. Bye-bye.